get this screen right. There we go. <clears throat> so last time we ended, um, shit started going down. I mainly blamed Xi'an for everything that just happened um, and for us possibly being targets of the two disappearances. So let's continue. There was no way I'd be able to sleep. When she hung up the phone like that, I realized for the first time what kind of situation I was in, as well as who the only ally who would support me was. I waited with bated breath for Xion to calm down and call me back. What would I do if I the phone rang while I was sound asleep? No matter how long I waited, however, it never rang. Exhausted, whenever my mind started to wander, I would jolt awake, as though I heard the phone ring. In the end, I brought the cordless phone with me into my futon and went to sleep with it in my arms. Though it still didn't amount to anything. Morning came, and by that time I was pretty sure she wasn't calling back. That was when a fierce drowsiness assailed me. Damn it. This is no time for sleep, Keichi Maibara. I slapped myself in the face a few times. I went to the washroom and washed my face, which is something I usually didn't do. <clears throat> that wasn't enough, enough either, so I brushed my teeth. Something else you usually don't do. After that, I was finally wide awake. When Mom saw how strange I was acting, her eyes went wide. What's wrong, Keiji? Are you going somewhere today? Going somewhere? Yeah, to school. Keiji, you don't look so good today. Do you have a cold? I'm not sick. I just didn't get much sleep. If I space out and start talking nonsense, just humor me. <laughs> I wonder what kind of nonsense you'll say, I wonder. Now I'm looking forward to it, huh? I felt utterly shattered, and I still hadn't picked myself back up this morning. And for precisely that reason, Reyna's honest smile was a sight for sore eyes. Yo! What's up, Kay? Reyna, good morning. What? Me? You look like you didn't get much sleep either. Either. Man had gone home yes early yesterday with a hangover, but she didn't look too good this morning either. Her usual cheerfulness was completely buried in shadow. Yeah, I went to bed at like three. I'm a little tired. Three? Hey now, you can't keep staying up late. You probably read the first volume of Meg. I thought it was interesting, then read the entire series, didn't you? I do that all the time. I understand. I've done that before. I joked, trying to shake off my sleepiness. I was trying to be considerate. However, neither me on nor Mena smiled. In fact, they didn't even pay attention. Mena's expression immediately darkened. What? Oh, wait, is it about the mayor? He still hasn't been found? Nope. Hey, wait a minute. What are you talking about? You can't find the mayor? Even the classroom, which was... Um, feel, seemingly filled with different sort of murmur today. Good morning, Katie. Have you heard? It looks like something terrible has happened. I don't really know this mayor person, but he's an old guy, right? Couldn't he just be wandering around senile? The mayor is certainly not senile. He's a sprightly man who can teach both calligraphy and swordsmanship. He probably got lost somewhere, like me. Oh, lost Rika! Oh, I want to take you home with me. 
Getting lost is only cute because children like Rika do it. A worn out old man getting lost isn't moy in the slightest. With my mind entertained dumb thoughts like that, our teacher arrived. Everyone rushed to their seats. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The class greeting was normal, but the atmosphere in the room was heavy. Some of you may have already heard, but last night, despite the late hour, the mayor never came home. Is there anyone here that saw the mayor yesterday? One or two hands went up in silence, and they told her about seeing him. None of it seemed to be vital information, however, and everyone began whispering amongst themselves. If anyone has seen the mayor, please tell an adult about it, all right? Now then, let's begin. After that, the same old lesson began. The rumors, once quieted, blossom into flowers again at lunchtime. I could hear a few different conversations. They were mostly related to the mayor's disappearance. Summing them all up, I came out with this. Yesterday evening, the mayor went to a meeting at the Shrine's Assembly Hall. The meeting ended <coughs> after the sun had fully set and everyone left. The elder's house was a bit far from the center of Hinamizawa. It was already late, and Hinamizawa doesn't have a lot of lights outside. Nobody saw the mayor after the meeting. However, because he would have been hungry, he wouldn't have taken any side strips. He would have gone straight home. However, no matter how long his family waited, he never returned. Some thought there might have been an accident. They left no stone unturned. They searched from irrigation channels to water wells and even in the rice paddies, but they didn't find him. Of course, there was a limit to how far they could search in the middle of the night. The police were going to wait for daylight, then have the young men of the town help search. If after all that, they still didn't find him, they were apparently even going to look in the mountains. Even now, at this moment, the adults were probably all searching for him. The more they searched in vain, and the more time passed. The only thing that came to mind was the curse, the rumors of Onikakushi, of the demoning away. Had he become this year's sacrifice to Oyashiro, which had recently been occurring every year? That scary possibility, which everybody thought, but nobody could say aloud, was slowly but surely spreading throughout the village. Was he demoned away and offered as a sacrifice to quell Oyashiro-sama's anger? My classmates were whispering to each other that the curse didn't happen this year, so there shouldn't have been any sacrifices. I, on the other hand, I knew the curse did happen again this year, and there were two people that died. This may sound strange, but... I hadn't exactly thought the elder would be the one to go missing. My reason was clear. Shion and I should have been higher priority than him. The four of us were thieves that broke the taboo and set foot into the sacred ritual storehouse. If Tomotake and Takano had suffered mysterious deaths, then it should have been mine and Shion's turn next. Who's saying this? This time should have been Shion and me, eh? I laughed painfully to myself. I yelled at Shion over the phone that I didn't want to end up in such a terrifying situation, but now that someone other than me had disappeared, I could only think that I should have been the first to go. Onigafuchi, the bottomless swamp, said to have been the place where they drowned sacrifices long ago. Just as it ran through my thoughts, the villagers must have also considered the swamp. Maybe police divers were plumbing its depths even now. They probably wouldn't find anyone. Not a single missing person had ever been found. 
They'd always suspected Onigafuchi, but not once had they'd ever turn up a corpse. After all, it was devilish, bottomless swamp, from which no one who sinks can ever return. I could hear someone telling their friend that in the classroom. Now that you mention it, Satoshi, he left around this time last year, didn't he? Huh? Satoshi? I've heard that name before. He was... Right. He disappeared because of last year's curse. The conversation was happening in the seat to me so I could clearly hear it. Didn't we search the whole village like this for Satoshi too? We didn't find him either. What did we decide that was? A demon in a way, right? Yeah. I heard he withdrew his, all his savings and ran away from home. Someone from the police said there was someone who saw him get on the bullet train at Nagoya Station. Ran away, huh? I wasn't that interested in the reason, which seemed understandable in this case. Everyone else who disappeared had their own reasons, too. Either they were still on the run because they were criminals, or they were a corpse that couldn't be found. It's not like any of them suddenly disappeared into thin air for no reason. But they disappeared. Someone disappeared whenever the curse took life, as if by design. They may have had various understandable reasons, but they still disappeared. From that point of view, it really might have been a demon in a way this time. The mayor's disappearance was the first such incident without a clear reason behind it. Of course, coming to that realization didn't help to resolve anything. It looks like I messed up the seasoning today. Sorry. Norma normally, Reyna would have devoured her lunch immediately, but today there was still a ton left. That wasn't because Reyna's lunch didn't taste good or anything, though. That, that isn't the case. Your lunch is always delicious. Satoko dips her chopsticks into Reyna's bento box and pulls bits of food out one after the other. Yep, a delicious indeed. Today in particular, in fact. Chop, chop. <laughs> you know those are pumpkin croquets, right? Are you okay? Oh, yes. If it's your pumpkin, then it's delicious. Did Satoko dislike pumpkin? Regardless, she forced herself to smile and shoved more into her mouth. Everyone knew. Nobody's lunch tasted very good today. Satoko kept shoveling it down, repeating her remark on how good it was. If it's that good, then I guess I've got to have some too. Satoko's going to eat it all if we let her. It, it's just so good. So I, I would certainly like it if Keiji were to eat some as well. Well, sometimes I have to show my adult generosity, right? All right, don't hold back on my account. Eat enough for the both of us today. <laughs> she really, really hated pumpkin, didn't she? That made it all the more touching to see Satoko's own brand of generosity. I grabbed her head and started choking it. Satoko, in a somewhat exaggerated fashion, was bawling, tears streaming down her face. No way. You'll never grow up if you give away such good food. Reyna, you eat it too. I only have leftover vegetables too, but it tastes great after having sat overnight. Yeah! The daikon radish has such a pretty color going through it. It looks delicious. I guess I'll have some then. Reyna reached out with her chopsticks, and at last the usual lunchtime atmosphere began to return. That was only at our desks, however. The dark tales of Oyashiro-sama's curse, which had recurred for five years in a row, didn't cease. The whole classroom remained stuck in this somber mood. Oyashiro-sama's curse had happened for five years straight. 
everyone had wanted the previous year to be the last. What was Oyashiro-sama's curse anyway? They were going to build a dam in Hinamizawa. The people building it were bad, so they were cursed. I would admit that much. Still, the dam project was frozen years ago, wasn't it? So why was the curse stubbornly persisting? I hit myself on the cheeks to perk myself back up. Everyone was trying so hard to brighten the mood, I couldn't go straight back to thinking about the curse like that. I forced the grim story out of my head. Driving Oyashiro-sama's curse out of my thoughts was actually a good idea. In the end, that meant I would be driving away the most terrifying thought of all. That I could be the next target. Mion's taking a while, isn't she? How long does it take to wash her hands? Mion said she was going to wash her hands and left, but she didn't come back yet. <laughs> She's probably taking a little afternoon nap somewhere. I think she was up pretty late last night looking for the mayor, after all. I smiled wryly and let out a sigh. Today was no good. However much we tried to lighten the mood, things just always came back to the mayor. It was just a no-good day. I had just transferred here recently, so the shock of a curse happening five years running was a maddeningly big one. Maybe I do need to appreciate that. When Michan was really little, the mayor would always spoil her. When she was going through her prankster phase, he loved her like her own daughter. She told me that often. I see. Mion wasn't shocked too. Someone disappearing at all because of a curse was a very scary thing. If the sacrifice was someone you knew though, the shock must be a hundred times worse. Totoko, as if she'd come to the same conclusion, bit her lower lip and looked downward. Uh, Rika's taking a while too. Maybe they're taking a nice afternoon nap together? Rika wasn't out that late. As soon as she yawned, everyone gathered around her and started saying, Good night, good night. Now that she mentioned it, there were a lot of old people rubbing their prayer beads in fervent gratitude towards Rika during the festival, too. An image of the indulgent and elderly came to mind. Had Rika discovered a way to get herself pampered like that? Is there a reason the old people treat Rika like an idol? Is she their ideal image of a granddaughter or something? <laughs> I don't know anything about that! But, but I want to see Rika yawning! It's probably all like... <gasps> Take her home. I don't personally think it's that cute. It's more like a glass. And she opens her mouth really wide, and you can see the back of her throat. Her, her, her throat? The thing in her throat all wobbly? That's disgusting. Rena's handy at times like these. I, fin I finally managed a heartfelt laugh. Oh, right. I'm on day duty today, aren't I? I need to go water the flower garden. The garden is right outside the teacher's lounge, too, so they can immediately tell if you don't do it. I, I think Satoko is cute, not only Rika! Voila! C -c Can't breathe! Oh, got a glimpse! It was so cute! Satoko is cute, too. I'm gonna take you home! Reina was squeezing her hands around Satoko's neck. And it was trying to get a look into her throat. That's disgusting. You know, Rena is... I can't say it out loud, but she's a notorious... Isn't she? Hearing Satoko make a weird noise like a chicken being strangled was kind of hilarious, and I couldn't help but laugh. At some point, the classroom had erupted into laughter, too. Maybe Reina was doing it on purpose. Even if she wasn't, this nonsense was a welcome sight. Anyway, let's get over to the flowers while I still have time. Slowly and quietly, 
Lest I destroy the room's newfound peace, I left the classroom. The watering can was hanging up outside the kitchen. This building had originally been all male forestry service buildings, so there was apparently nothing as thoughtful as a garden here before. When they decided to have a school share the space, they built one there as a modest gesture of appreciation. But well, the flower bed, it was a little longer than you expect. It went all around and all over the place. It was so big, one would need to refill the watering can five or six times to get it all done. I was doing this together with a kid who was also thankfully on day duty today. She was in the lowest grade though, and a full size smaller than even Rika. I couldn't make a kid who would struggle just to lift the full watering can help me with this. For this, if one was placed on day duty with someone one liked, they'd do it all for you so it'd be cake. No point in blaming her. I give up, I'll just get started. Watering can in hand, just as I was about to leave the building, the old man from the forestry office addressed me. Sonny, there's a vegetable garden behind the warehouse, right? It's all just about dried up. Water that too, would you? Oh, you mean that curry vegetable garden? The one with potatoes and carrots and other things that are only ingredients for curry? It's definitely the personal garden of our curry-loving teacher, but making with students, students responsible for its upkeep, is getting them involved in her personal affairs. I couldn't say that to his face, though, so I gave up and decided to carry out my duties for the day. The sunlight out front was strong. The great chorus of cicadas was strongly underlining how nothing was different today than yesterday. I passed by the classroom, and I don't know how it happened, but Mena and Satoko were in a huge melee. While I was gone, the kids had arranged all the desks in a circle, forming a ring while everyone was cheering them on. This has got to be the, the most stupid school ever. Yeah, that's how it should be. Once school ended, we would need to return to reality, where talk of the elders' disappearance would once again be all over the place. I wanted everyone to forget about everything and have fun just like yesterday if only while they were at school. No wonder everyone grows up to be cultists who murder people. They have like a fucked up school, they don't even learn anything. Easily brainwashable. <laughs> In that sense, Satoko's whirling elbow and Reina's backwards flying spin kick made for a pleasant sight. Even if, as a result, they flipped over my desk. Oh, that's my pencil box. Ugh. I'll just let it happen today. I set to work hastily watering everything, wanting nothing more than to be done as soon as possible. That should about do it. No sooner had I thought that than I remembered that I had to water the teacher's curry vegetable garden too. Ugh, oh, it's such a thing that I feel like I have a feeling that it'll come back to bite me if I don't. Gave up, filled the can with water again, and headed behind the warehouse. This was a place students didn't like to go. There was always damp here and you could discard the possibility of slugs and pill bugs being around. So when I ran across her in a place like that, I was surprised. Oh, 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 Rika. Don't scare me like that. Rika was just standing there, like a puppet devoid of life. I was the only one who was startled here. Rika didn't even seem to react to my appearance. Rika? Finally, she noticed me. Her expression was clearly abnormal. There was red under her eyes, stained with tears and dirt. There were blades of grass stuck in her hair, too, and her clothes looked like she had fallen to the ground. Rika, are, are you hurt? Did you fall? <laughs> no, that isn't it. 
Rika said in the brightest voice she could manage as she rubbed her eyes. She didn't look anywhere near normal, though. What happened? You weren't sleeping on the storehouse roof and then fell off or anything, did you? Don't worry about me. I have something... Oh, wait. Wrong voice. Don't worry about me. I have something I want to ask you, Keiji. Rika walked over and clung to me. At first, I thought she was playing a trick on me. Eventually, however, I realized it was just so I wouldn't run from the question she was about to ask. I shuddered. Um, what, what do you want from me? She looked straight into my eyes. Her upturned eyes bored right into me. It was as though they were trying to pull the answer out of my own eyes without actually asking me the question. It was scary, so I averted my eyes from hers. Keiji, did you do something bad on the night of the festival? My body gave a jolt from its very core. Rika, who was clinging to me, might have felt my shiver. A nervous tingle crawled up from my feet, and after going up my back and freezing my entire body, it made its way into my brain. Keiji, do you really not remember? My head began to throb. I, I, I don't... I, I don't understand anything. Bion asked me. Oishi asked me. Shion asked me. And now Rika was asking me. We thought nobody knew about what we did last night, but in fact, everyone knew. They all knew. And they came to ask me again and again until I admitted it. When I thought about it, it was pretty clear the whole thing was out in the open. Oh my god, it wasn't that freaking bad. You snuck into a warehouse. Oh my god, the world is ending. After all, don't Tomataki and Taka Takano's deaths prove it? Keiji? How should I respond? I never should have entered the forbidden storehouse, and even though I regretted it so much, was she saying it wasn't enough? However, I had all but decided what I was going to say. I'm not exactly a good kid, you know. I've done lots of bad things, so I can't remember anything specific. Just that I, as I had with all the others, I evaded the question. Rika stared up at me with innocent eyes. Her eyes were so painful that I had to look away. A few moments of mutual silence, Rika released me. I'm sorry for asking you something so strange. Please forget about it, she said, smiling her usual smile. Then, she went running off as if nothing had happened. As she retreated in silence, I could feel her accusing me. R Rika! If she didn't hear my voice, then I was going to give up. However, she heard it. Rika swiveled around and waited for me to continue. I was the one who had questions now. Still, asking that any of them could just be a half-assed way of admitting what I did. Hey, Rika. What is it? If I, everyone knows anyways, then I should be able to at least ask this, right? Why is everyone asking me about the night of the festival? That evening? Had I done something that wrong? I felt plenty sorry about it, and I only looked anyway. I didn't break anything, steal anything. Really? Still... Tomotake and Takano, they died so miserably. Since those two had come to such an end, there's obviously no way it would forgive me. Rika cutely tilted her head in confusion and waited for me to say something. If I were to admit to what happened that night, though, she might suddenly do a 180, as if flipping a switch. That would make sense. Rika was the Shrine Maiden. She was the least likely to forgive me for breaking the taboo, wasn't she? Upon reflection, wouldn't telling her be more terrifying than telling me on or Oishi? 
We could just give up and leave, couldn't she? She didn't. She only... She only was quietly... Quietly waiting for me to say it myself. Say it, Keiichi Maibara. If you really are sorry, then you should say so. Of course, it's normal to hesitate given the crazy way Tomotake and Takano died. A pulping machine called chaos was grinding up my brain. The juice swung out of it, turned into big droplets of sweat which began to fall. Keiichi! Rika suddenly straightened up, trying to pat me on the head. I don't really understand what you're worried about, Keiichi. I had nothing to say to that. I lowered my head a little so Rika's palm could reach it. She petted me, kind of like one would a cat. Oh, God. Do you know about the big storehouse a little way behind the shrine grounds? It stores the implements we use for rituals. My breath literally stopped. Rika, no, wasn't acting in a coercive way at all. Apparently, on the night of the festival, a cat snuck into the storehouse. A cat? Yes, a cat. Meow, meow. Rika knew. She realized I was in fear. I could tell she was desperately trying to choose the right words so that she wouldn't scare me. The cat always wanted to explore inside the storehouse, but... I was mean to it and never let it go inside. So on the night of the festival, the cat couldn't hold itself back any longer and went inside. I think the cat is... what's her name? Yeah. The cat. It was clearly supposed to be Takano. Oh wait, was it supposed to be me? Inside, there were actually lots of things that scared the cat. We could make a cute gesture like a ghost was coming out to frighten me. The cat was both terrified and amazed. It ran away as fast as it could. Kind of had a shiver shiver. Meow meow. It was terrible. This cat. Who are you saying it was? The cat is a cat. Meow meow. Rika still avoided saying it. The cat. Though, without a doubt, was me. No, I think it's Takano. You didn't want to go in there. Rika. Please tell me. The cat. What should it do now? Maybe it was a desperate question to ask. I had sort of omitted to being a cat. The cat is just a cat. So it can keep meowing and everything will be fine. Everything will... Will we find that stupid? Shouldn't it just keep meowing? Rika and I have put it together an entire conversation using cat as a code word. I didn't say it directly, but I had already admitted it. I didn't want to end up like those two. I didn't want to be a sacrifice like Shion said. That's what I thought, so I stubbornly remained silent. But now that's enough. It can't just keep meowing. The dog saw the cat making mischief and sneaking inside. The dog. That's right. It was the dog. It keeps coming to the cat and trying trying to get it to say that it snuck inside. After I said that, Rika's expression clouded over. She was trying to hide it, but I had already noticed her eyes darkening. Rika... The silence was frightening, so I spurred her on. At that point, Rika grinned. It's all right. I'll protect the cat. Huh? I thought for a moment that I had misheard those words. So dependable they were. The cat is really scared. But it isn't really bad. I think all the dogs are just misunderstanding. It's not all that bad. The cat is worrying too much. I'll do something about it for sure. 
we could do something about it. I don't even know left from right at the moment, so Rika didn't look all that dependable. It might be hard, but I'll do my best. Go for it. Yay. She clenched her fist and stuck it in the air. Rika said that the cat can just keep meowing. She said to leave it all to her. Is that really all it took to resolve this whole thing? W will you really be all right, Rika? If I don't do my best, then something bad could happen to all the dogs, too. I had no idea what Rika was talking about anymore. She had been talking to me under the assumption that I was aware of certain things. So at first I understood her. Around the middle, though, I stopped understanding anything. However, one thing I did know was not to worry and leave it to her. Rika straightened up once again, patted me on the head and smiled. I was so moved by that reassuring feeling that I couldn't help but start to cry. I'm sorry. The cat it really was just a little bit of mischief. It didn't think any of this would. It's too much of a scaredy cat. That's why it should never have seen the storehouse. She was right. It was far too shocking for someone to see based on a little bit of interest alone. That's why they made it so difficult to look at in the first place, wasn't it? Rika, what will happen to the cat? Two of the cats that stuck in, well, that night they... I heard Tomotake and Takano's death were being kept a secret. Rika might not have known about it. Tomotake and Takano? I gave a start at the mention of actual names, though it's weird to do at this point. You should forget about them. My spine froze again. F f forget? Yes. It won't do you any good to remember those two, Keiichi. The more you think about it, the scarier it'll get. So you should forget about them as soon as possible. She said something so enormously terrifying without letting the smile on her face waver at all. I don't know where you heard about it from, but you should forget everything. Make your mind as clean as a scrubbed bathtub. F forget? Rika, y y you know, don't you? You know how those two died? No matter how they died, it has nothing to do with you, Keiichi. Rika declared this in a flat voice. Nothing to do with me? So forget about it? The girl before me, she was innocent and lovable and even seemed trustworthy, but suddenly she took on another dimension. Don't get involved with their deaths? Oh, uh, what? Oh. I'll help you, Keiichi. Those two contradictory statements twisted and distorted my image of the girl in front of me. What about Shion? What'll happen to her? It might have been dangerous to mention Xion's name, but I couldn't stop myself from asking. Rika saw through any, everything anyway. There was no way I was going to fool her or keep anything from her at this point. The younger of the sister cats? Meow, meow. Yeah, the little sister cat. Rika appeared to think about this for a moment. It was hard for me to endure even this momentary silence. The big sister cat is angry. The little sister cat did something bad, so she's really mad. The big sister cat? I could only mean me on. I recall being questioned by her yesterday. Keiichi. The big sister cat is not in a good mood at all. 
I think we should leave her alone for a while. Not in a good mood. Those words sent a shiver through me. Mion was mad. She was mad that we entered the ritual storehouse. Let's stop having club from now on, huh? Why? I think we should leave her alone. Rika ended her sentence with such force that I couldn't say anything in response. Hey, Keiji Mabara, don't disobey Rika right now. Oops. She's the one. She's the only one who said she'll help me right now. I'll leave things to her just as she said to. I mean, she even said the cat should just keep meowing. I'll forget everything, like she said. I'll leave everything to her. I'll forget everything about Takano and Tamatake and what I did that night. Just then, we heard a bell far away, marking the end of our lunch break. I guess we should go back to class. Keiichi, as if she had noticed how miserable I was, about to leave everything to her and flee the scene, Rika called out to stop me. If the misunderstanding dog comes to try and bite the cat, please tell me, okay? The misunderstanding dog? She put it in such a cute sounding way, but the true meaning behind those words was an eerie one. Who, who is the misunderstanding dog? The dog that bit the mayor. I don't know why it did that. If it was going to bite anyone, it would have been the trickster cat first. The flow and blood in my body felt like it completely stopped for a moment. Rika had admitted it. The sacrifices of that terrible calamity, she admitted that if it were to happen again, it would be she on her eye. I didn't know what was true about this girl standing before me. My suspicion gave way to fear and nearly began to change into anger. Was she a savior who would protect me? Or a stranger, trying to capture and kill me for the sake of that horrible tradition? I had no idea what was true. I'm sorry. The cat is already scared, and I said something to scare it even more. I'm really sorry. Rika bowed so quickly it looked like her head had been pulled downward. Still, she was right I was cowering. I could dis distinctly feel my body shaking violently. So when Rika reached out her hand to pat me on the head, I pulled away without thinking. I'm, I'm sorry. Rika made a very sad face, but I just couldn't bring myself to put my head out for her again. That day, Rika wasn't feeling up for club activities, so she suggested we not bother. There was always vetoes when someone didn't feel up to it. Reina and the others seemed really disappointed. The big sister cat is not in a good mood. I remembered Rika's words and quietly stole a glance at Mion's expression. If I could forget the way she questioned me yesterday. Her behavior was the same as it always was. Still here, Matrix? <clears throat> After dinner, without the energy to watch TV, 
I climbed into futon in my bedroom and let my head be overtaken by gloomy thoughts. I told Rika anything and everything. She had seemed trustworthy at the time, but had that really been the right choice? The more I looked back on it, the less I understood what Rika was saying. Not only did she know about Takano and Takamotake's deaths, but she spoke of them as if she were a concerned party. After all this time in my futon, I began to tremble fiercely. Had, in my, had I been lured in by Rika's sweet smile? and told her things I shouldn't have? I should have continued to feign ignorance. I shouldn't have shown her such a weak side of me. My emotions are a mix of regret and fear and it colored, colored the darkness of the night with an additional layer of terror. Suddenly, <laughs> I might have yelped. That's how surprised I was. Keiichi, I've been calling your name for a while. You have a phone call. It's from Sonazaki-san. It was Dad. I reached out for the cordless phone through the gap in my door. Sonozaki, uh, which one? The older or the younger? I, I don't, I don't know. Ask her yourself. I took the receiver and buried myself in the futon again. Hello? Mion? Or Xion? It's me, Xion. Good evening. I practically jumped out of bed. It was Xion, who I hoped so desperately would call me back last night. Xion! Oh, I'm sorry about last night. I got all riled up. I heard what sounded like a deep sigh on the other end. You and me are in the same position, aren't we? I shouldn't have blamed you for everything like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, so please cheer up. I called you because I'm in a better mood. If you're sorry, then I'll forgive you, so please stop apologizing. Xion's tone still sounded a little angry, but the, for the moment she said she'd forgive me. You're right. You're right too. We're tied to the same fate. Making sure the other is all right is the only way to guarantee our safety. Yeah, I agree. We absolutely need to share whatever information we have so that we don't die, like Takano and Tomatake. I forced myself to swallow a solid drop of saliva. Then, let's continue from where we left off. You'll listen without getting angry this time, right? Yeah, I'll be fine. Firstly, it seems sneaking into the ritual was more of a taboo than we thought. Takano and Tomatake's miserable ends, terrible enough that you could call them a warning, they were more than enough to make me believe that. The culprits killed those two, the ones for responsible for selling the storehouse. And they'll come for us next. I know you want to deny it, but please accept it. It'll be too be late to believe me after you've disappeared, okay? I got it. You can never be too careful after all. I don't want to accept it either. To think that sneaking a peek at a museum of torture devices deserves a death like that, I don't want to believe it. That's what a taboo is. For those who honor it, if one breaks the taboo, no matter how small or innocent their at intentions were, they won't be forgiven. Let's report anything we notice that seems strange. 
if we connect all the pieces that we have, then maybe we'll find out who killed them, or maybe even the truth behind the incidents of the previous years. We could find the key that would resolve everything. Okay, you're right. You're right about that. All I was doing was waiting in fear, but Xion had already thought that far ahead. <sighs> Given how trustworthy she felt, I began became embarrassed over how passive I was being. My fear is what if this is me on? Like, tricking him into telling her everything. <sighs> okay. Then I'll start, since I suggested it. I feel like someone has been watching me lately. What? It might be my imagination, but I'll tell you anyway. I think it's just me, but if you feel like you're being watched too, Kay, then maybe it's not just my imagination. Well, don't worry. At the very least, every been, everything's been fine for me, I think. As I spoke with Xion, I thought back on today. I had no grounds to say that everything was fine. I see. Then I suppose it was my imagination. But you be careful too, Kay. Be especially careful when you're by, by yourself in public. I'm in Okonomiya, so I won't be alone very often, but you live in Hinamizawa. There'll be a lot of times when you're alone. Please be extra careful. You're right. Yeah, I'll be careful. Also, about my sister. Has she been acting strange lately? Your sister? Mion, right? What do you mean by acting strange? Well, yesterday I... She came to me and asked me where I was on the wet night of the Watanagashi. What? That's... She asked me too. The day before yesterday, I think, Mion asked me. I see. I told her I wasn't there. What did you say? I did the same thing. I just dodged the question. Both of us gave a quiet sigh of relief. Ever since that night of the festival, my sister has been acting strangely. We can't be too careful, so just be aware, okay? Mian was acting strangely. Aside from her asking me about the night of the Watanagashi, she hadn't seemed too out of the ordinary. At least, from my point of view. Her twin sister, though, was saying she was acting weird. Maybe it was such a slight change that a stranger like me would be able to notice. Got it. I'll start being careful. I'll always have Reyna with me on the way back to school, so I shouldn't end up, um, up alone with me on very often. Please be careful. If there's anything that's bothering you, you can tell me. All right. Okay. Then is there anything you want to tell me, Kay? My turn. That's right. Maybe I should report on Oishi asking me the same question at the library. Oh, that time when you were too slow to escape? Yeah. Oishi asked me some pretty forcefully. Whether I was with Takano and Tomotake that night, and whether I had seen you. Oishi seemed to have seen the four of us together. From the police point of view... That would make us the last people who had seen them. I suppose, given that, it's only natural that they'd be interested in us. I evaded the questions then, too, but that might have just made them more interested. There was no way I could have tricked that sly old fox Oishi. Yum, yum. My, trouble, my troubled countenance would have only made him more certain. Hey, Xion? Since... They're the police. Shouldn't we just tell them? I mean, considering our situation, I think having them on our side would be a good thing. Shan didn't answer right away. For a few moments, all I could hear was her breathing as she thought about it. Now that I think about it, Oishi said there was something possibly shady about Mion. At least I think that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely did. As I explained yesterday, the Sonazaki family holds a lot of influence over Hinamizawa. 
Oishi is under impression that the whole village, with the Sonozaki family at the center of it all, is responsible for the recurrent freak deaths. I kind of think that too, actually. The whole village is behind them, with the Sonozaki at the center? Please don't get angry like you did yesterday and just listen. I hammered that home before I got too upset. During the Hinamizawa Dam Wars, the priest who everyone was anticipating to lead the anti-dam movement acted as though he was unrelated, so the Sonozaki main house rose up to take charge. My sister told you about the battles that happened, right? Yeah. All of Hinomizawa got together and fought as one. They held protests, brought it to court, and even appeared on TV. In reality, there were many things that happened that were far more extreme. Under the surface, the Sonozaki main house was doing all sorts of things. They were acting illegally. For example, they would sneak into the construction site in the middle of the night and steal equipment or break it. Steal equipment, put sugar cubes in the gasoline tanks of the construction vehicles. Sugar in their gasoline tanks? Why would they? You don't know? It's practically the representative guerrilla tactic. It was used uh, by underground organizations in France in World War II for one. When you put sugar in, the engine gets burned out and breaks down. That's, that's pretty bad though, isn't it? It was destruction of property and nothing less. When they beefed up the guard at the construction facility, the family turned to attacking important construction personnel who worked there. The government officials, who had given permission for the construction, for example, received all kinds of threats. Not just from people from the prefectural office, either. Apparently, this reached as far as the Ministry of Construction. As far as I've heard, they've even kidnapped a child once. Kidnapped? Yes. The child of an important person in the Ministry of Construction, who was in charge of the Hinomizawa Dam, got spirited away. Then, one day, all of a sudden, he was rescued in the Taka Takatsudo Mountains, which are upstream from Hinomizawa. Apparently, there were never any criminal accusations, but people whispered that it had been a threat to stop the dam construction from happening. Besides that, there are stories about so many different threats that I couldn't possibly list them all. That's... God damn, that's bad, isn't it? Right. In the middle of the whole thing, the first incident happened. That's when the dismemberment of the construction manager occurred. People whispered that the Sonozaki family had bought out the principal offender, but of course he fled and they still haven't found him. When she put it that way, the Sonozaki family definitely seemed suspicious. Oishi, Oishi even seems to think that the criminal was erased so he wouldn't talk. Which is pretty reasonable of him. It's even enough to make me think that the Sonozaki main house is doing something really shady behind the scenes, even though I'm related to them. Are you telling me to believe that? That the Sonozaki main house, where Mion lives, has done all those bad things? You're telling me to believe that? 
Even if you don't, okay, the villagers do. While well, they approached the dam in upright and lawful ways, the Sonihasaki house did the dirty work for them. Everyone believes that, that they fought at the front, so they take the brunt of the criticism. So they're respected as sort of heroes of darkness. I think I only really know one part of it. For example, the really bad stuff, like the kidnapping. I think only a hand people have knew about it, including gra Grandma. The Sonozaki's family is secretive, after all. Secretive, huh? Family so unforthcoming that even Shion, who is related to them, doesn't know everything about it. The Sonozaki family, unlike Shion, her older twin, Mion, was deeply involved with everything, and that was not a fun thought to entertain. My sister, though young, was the one who acted at the center of the illegal resistance movement. Mion? What do you mean? Well, our dad is a big shot Yakuza. Even when she was little, my sister managed to subjugate a bunch of young street rats. Then she played all sorts of tricks on them and just generally got in their way. Mion did that? Now she's pretty laid back, so it might be hard to imagine. They put her in charge of everything, from property damage to threats and even acts of violence. Though since she was a kid, they could get her released pretty easily. She learned that her age could be used as a weapon. It may have been indiscreet, but I couldn't help but chuckle dryly. She may have been young, but she was certainly still me on. Even back then, she had been known for her craftiness. It's nothing to laugh about. Please take this seriously. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. She had gotten pretty angry at me. Well, her delinquency soon got her into a position of authority in the Sonzaki main house. It's not unthinkable that Oishi setbacks them for the dismemberment incident, and the later ones too. For a few dumb moments, I was dumbstruck at the tales of Mion's past. None of them matched the image I had of her. A younger Mion, dirtying her hands with all sorts of crimes, given the damn construction project hell. As the successor to the Sonazaki's main family, she was always right in the center of the vortex of strange innocent occur occurring year after year. Was that really the Mion I know? Maybe the one I know isn't the real Mion. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't bring myself to accept these images of Mion I was hearing from another person. Well, anyway, back to the main subject. I just wanted you to know that my sister is someone worth being cautious around. Please be careful. I didn't want to understand. Mion was a fantastic friend. She would never do something to back me into a corner like that. She did ask me pretty harshly about the night of the festival, but even that, it wasn't like she said it in a mean way or anything. All right, I'll make sure to be careful. We're sisters related by blood, but within the Sonozaki family, we're basically of different class. I want you to recognize how distant they are from me. Please. The more Xion tells me about Mion, the less I understand who Mion is. The Mion I know wasn't a dangerous person. She joked around, smiled a lot, and was full of passion. Now that I realized I held such a view towards her, Xion was telling me to change it. To be careful around the best friend ever. To doubt her. The idea was sad and painful. Now about Oishi. If you think it's a good idea, then I think we should give him the information he needs. I think getting the police on our side will work in our favor. You thought so too, Xion. It's just, at the moment, <clears throat> like I explained, the police have their eyes on the Sonozaki family already. Oishi in particular completely believes that they're the masterminds behind the serial incidents. 
That includes me, of course. So, uh, I don't really want much to do with Oishi. I see. If Oishi found out about the Sonazaki family's strife-filled history, then he probably wouldn't be happy with Shion either. At last I understood Mion's instinctive dislike for Oishi. Oishi. It's probably out in the open at this point, but try not to give my name to him. If you agree to that, then I don't think there's a problem with you telling him anything. Got it. I won't mention your name. The police investigation ability should be quite a reliable weapon for us right now. If Oishi tells you anything interesting, then let me know as well. Of course. We'll share information and investigate together. Who killed Takano and Tomatake? Who was after us? Until we know, we need to defend ourselves. Anything else? Besides what Oishi told you, I mean. If anything has happened, no matter how minor, please tell me. Aside my, from my discussion with Oishi? Oh. Should I tell her that I revealed everything to Rika? Rika was acting like she knew something I didn't. She told me to leave it to her, but what? That's right. When I was talking to her, I mentioned Xion's name, too. Oh, God, was that a mistake? I felt like Xion would get angry. Nothing else? Okay? I remained quiet for a little, so Xion encouraged me to speak, unable to bear the silence. Um, I struggled with what to say. She undressed me instead. It doesn't sound like it, so can I ask you something? I just heard this myself. Is it true that old man Kimiyoshi went missing? Old oh, man Kimiyoshi. My gut told me that was the name of the mayor. You mean the mayor? Wait, Shion, you haven't heard? I don't know anything. I just overheard my dad talking about it on the phone again. I realized I shouldn't have said that. Here in Hinamizawa, the things that happened around this time, when Oyoshiro-sama's curse would recur, would all be covered up. Yeah, actually, last night after a meeting, he didn't come home, so all of Hinamizawa was confused. They searched all through the village, but they haven't found him. Then I haven't heard. The police should be searching for him as well. Why didn't you tell me something like that in right away? She sounded angry at Lee, me, bringing all her emotion to bear. Sorry, I thought you already knew. I didn't want to hide it or anything. The receiver was silent. Did Xion get mad and hang up again? Xion? Hello? Kay? What? What should I do? Xion's tiny, confused voice sounded like it belonged to a different person than the one yelling a few seconds ago. What's wrong? Tell me. We're not keeping secrets from each other, right? Says the person who didn't talk about Rita. Xian hesitated for a long while, but then she confessed. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to hide it. It just... Well, the conversation got turned around and... We're on the same side, right? I won't get mad, so tell me honestly. Xian still hesitated for a few moments. Then, in a resigned voice, she continued. I, old man Kimiyoshi, I, I told him everything. She seemed to think I would yell at her right after that, so I heard her catching her breath. Contrary to what she thought, I was a little relieved. She had done the same thing I had when I confessed everything to Rika. So when it's gentle the voice I could, I told so as not to set her off, I responded, Old man Kimiyoshi, he's someone you feel comfortable confiding in, Shion? Yes, he would. When I was little, he was really nice to me. Shion felt the same pain as the result from us, from the mayor's disappearance. She had a different kind of strength from Mion, and as she continued, her voice sounded truly sad and pained. 
all I did was play tricks on him, but he would just always smile. He listened to anything I had to say. He was such a kind person. Calm down, Xian. It's not like he's dead, right? Don't lose heart so easily. Xian didn't answer. Even as, as I said it myself, I didn't think we'd ever find the missing mayor again. He probably wouldn't even figure out if he was alive or dead. Xian must have been thinking the same thing. That night, I told the mayor that we snuck into the ritual storehouse. Also that someone saw us and was out to get us. Does the mayor know about how absurdly Takano and Tomatake died? Yes. He knew about it. I told him that they died by Yoishiro-sama's curse and that I could be made a sacrifice to calm his anger. I just said it straight out. Right. What then? Old man Kimiyoshi didn't get angry. He smiled. Then that told me that if I was properly sorry about it, there was no way I'd be demoned away. He was really smiling. And he told me to leave it to him. Until Sian stopped sobbing, I was unable to find any words for her. I couldn't imagine what kind of person the mayor was, nor what Xian's relation with, with him was like. Words of comfort, however, mean so much to us when we're about to be crushed by anxiety. Today, Rika caught me that too. If someone were get, who gave me such a sense of security were to disappear, then I could guess what kind of shock Xian was in. It's my fault. Because I revealed everything. Stop it, Xion. It's not your fault. No! It is my fault! I told him everything! Old man Kimiyoshi found out about everything, so he has to have been killed. It was right after I told him after all, he disappeared. The same night that I confessed and he told me everything was going to be alright. He found out, so he became involved. doing that, then they would have obviously have killed you before killing the mayor. The order is all wrong. You or I should have been killed first. Why the hell would they kill someone else first? No, oh, it's an order. They must be planning to kill us last of all. What? What? They're not killing the first people. Come in mind there. They start by killing those we're close to. And then after they cause us so much pain, they kill us. That must be what they do. I said, calm down. Shion, you're in shock. You're panicking. The mayor's disappearance has nothing to do with you. It's unconnected. It's not related to, Ka to Kano and Tamatake dying at all either. My words came out as a scream, as if I were shouting them at myself. No! It is connected. It just has to be. I told him. So he was killed. He got killed because he knew. I confessed it to him, so he got killed. She was repeated the same thing as before, as though she were in delirium. Despite my trying to console the craze, she on for some reason that shadow at my be feet began to freeze. From that shadow, a cold arm reached out. So cold it seemed like it would freeze even my heart just by touching me and grab my ankle. The heat generated by my body, the arm that was absorbing it. It was a horrible chill. A freezing cold, numbingly frigid. It was an inviolable chill of fear. Though I sympathized with Xion, I had been naive in thinking it was something only she had to worry about. In my head, 
Xion's eerie words repeated over and over again. He was killed because I told him. He was killed because he found out. I confessed everything. So he was killed. Those words echoed through my head like a monotone mantra. And finally, those even repetitions took on meaning. The quiet shaking that had already overtaken me had turned into a violent shiver that shot up my spine. R Rika. It's Rika! What? W what did you say just now? I, well, the truth is, I... I told her! I told Rika! Today! R Rika, you, you mean Rika Chama? The one from the Furude Shrine? Yes, Rika. I, I felt so scared and uneasy that I did it. I, I told her. When, when you did, what did she say? The cat is, is worrying too much. I'll do something about it for sure. That's what Rika said, and then she smiled. She smiled just like the missing mayor had when he encouraged Xion. I'm sorry, Shion. I. W Rika! Alright. If you're that concerned, then don't worry about me. Please go find out whether she's safe. Yeah, y I'll do that. I'll call you again tomorrow at the same time. When I do, I'll know you'll know I'm still alright. Got it. Wait, I'll be waiting. Okay, bye. Sorry! I'm hanging up! I put down the receiver without waiting for Shion to say goodbye. The danger to Shion and myself was secondary at this point. My sixth sense was blaring alarms in my head. I don't like this feeling. It's really bad. It's definitely, definitely bad. Damn it. Please be safe. Rika! And that's where we shall finish today. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy.